Greetings again, all you motion makers and heartbreakers. You are now officially a witness of part 3 of the Crystal City tutorials. In this one, we will create the glowy, swirly particles with trails, and have those illuminate the crystals from the inside and the outside by effectively faking subsurface scattering to save render times. Then I'll top it off with setting up the camera animation. So please stand clear of the closing doors and let's go! Back in trusty old cinema, let's create some particles. Start by making an emitter. Now I want these particles to shoot up out of the city and just illuminate it from the inside. Let's just check to see if the, uh, the emitter is emitting, which it is, good. Let's rotate it around so it emits upwards, which it seems to be doing now. Let's also remember to set the project frame rate to whatever you want to render in. And I want the project to be a bit longer as well, so we get some more time to play with. Next up, I want to make the particles start in the middle of the city. So I'll make this emitter quite small and have it shoot out about yeah, 10, 10 particles a second. That's probably fine for now. Then I'll set the speed relatively high for the center particles and the variation high as well. So we'll get many different speeds for our particles. So now we have all these particles shooting out with different speeds here, and that's what we want. But it's still a bit boring, so let's go ahead and create a rotator effector, which is just going to make our particles spin around and on the wrong axis. So let's just rotate that one around, and now we can see these particles are twirling upwards. Excellent. Now with those center particles pretty much moving the way we want, let's make a copy of the emitter and scale it up to get the uh, outer particles as well. It should also be a bit bigger so it covers the entire city area. I'm going to set it to uh, 1000 by 1000, which uh, yeah, that's enough. And these particles could do with moving a bit slower than our center ones, so I'm going to turn the speed down. I also want to leave some time for the center particles to be on their own, so I'll set the start time for the symmetry to be 60 frames in. So now it starts in the middle, and then after a while you get these added particles coming out of the rest of the city. I'll have a few more of those actually. Now we can turn back our crystals on, so we can see what it looks like with the city in there. And I think that looks pretty okay. About the right speed, about the right scale. I reckon it's time now for another knoll where we can keep our freshly made parties. With everything tidy, let's create our trails. Select both the emitters, go into MoGraph and create a tracer object. I do want the trails to stop after a while, so I'll limit that from the end, maybe by about 100 frames or so. Then to render this, I will create a sweep nerves and add the trail to that, and then uh, add a circle to use as a shape to uh, sweep along that tracer. <laughs> now that's uh, a bit too subdivided, so let's uh, reduce the subdivisions on that circle and <laughs> scale it down, because it's almost a bit too big, and still a bit too big. That's better. And with a quick render, we can uh, barely see those trails. So I think they deserve a material of their own. Let's make one with uh, pure luminance and a little bit of a, a gradient on. Make that gradient vertical and have it go to some mid-range grey. Like multiply and pick some, uh, some nice colour for your trails. I'm going to go with blue again just to match the overall look. A little bit cyan. And make it a bit stronger than 100% because then I want to add the transparency as well so you get a bit more of a, a transparent look without losing any of the uh, the colour and it's pretty much what I always uh, dreamed it would be almost I want to bring it up a bit more in brightness those trails Just bring them out a bit more that's better and I think they could do with a few more millimetres in thickness Let's sort of make sure they uh, taper off at the end, and I'll just go into the uh, sweep nerve details and draw a curve here at the uh, on the spline, just to make sure that they taper off at the end and then they're thicker at the beginning, like so. Then we get these trails that look quite alright actually, so it's starting to look a bit uh, a bit nice. 
I'll also have some particles leading the trails. So I'll create a, um, let's go for a cylinder and add that to the emitters and then make sure the emitters are showing the objects, which they are now. And I'll just align those to the movement of the particles and then uh, they turn and rotate with the particles. Still too big though and on the wrong axis. So let's fix that and scale those down and down. That's, that's probably about the right size there. Don't need that many segments, but we do need a bit more height, I think. So if we give that a render, we have something that looks a bit like flying guinea pig poop. And let's take it one step further with a filler, just so it's a bit rounded. Now those need a material to look less like poop. And I'm going to make those blue as well to match the trails. A blue cyan works just fine. Add that to the particles and to the other particle. Because every particle deserves a friend, I'm going to duplicate those particles. And for them not to be twins, I'm going to duplicate the material. Call the first material blue and the other material yellow. And the yellow material we will turn yellow. Fancy that. Replace the material in one of those particles in each emitter and now we get two different coloured particles all hanging out having fun. Before I move on I just want to turn down the light a little bit just to, to make it look less washed out. And let's rename this to trail because that is the material for the trail. By the same logic I'll call the ground ground and the sky sky. And then I'll save as well. Saving is important. And now it's time for the super special effects, because I want all of these particles to cast light on this crystal city. And to achieve that, let's get super advanced again and create light to add as children to the particles. And then we've got light on the particles. <laughs> Magic! Let's select all our lights to edit them and do a quick render and we'll see that this is not perfect. These lights desperately need a fall off and I'll make that inverse square clamped. Scale that way down, make it quite small and render again. <laughs> we can see that it's, it's a bit more under control so that when we increase the intensity, we get some sweet highlights on these crystals. And this is really going to look quite nice when these particles move through the city and close to these crystals. If we now only select the lights in the blue particles, we can make that light blue. And you don't have to believe me, but this will actually make the light blue as well. <laughs> Fancy that. And that actually can be a bit bluer. Let's repeat the process, but for the yellow particles, turning those yellow. Render again, and now we're getting this uh, nice duotone matching the sky a little bit. And here comes the part about making subsurface scattering. Well, something like subsurface scattering, because I don't want to extend my render times much. So I'll uh, hack the system by going through our lights and just making copies of them. One uh, by one. Just come on. Come on. There we go. There we go. Let's just make that one as well. Now we can select all those copies and make the fall off a bit bigger. But while also slightly turning down the strength of them. And I'll also go through and make the subsurface scattering lights all a bit more colourful, starting with the yellow ones. And actually, before I confuse myself, let's rename these lights SSS, subsurface scattering, so I know what I'm doing. Now let's do the blue ones and make those even more colourful. And render again. And we can see that we've got some extra added light on top now. But we want that truly translucent subsurface scattering look, don't we? So I'll turn on the interactive render region so you can see the difference. When we check ambient illumination. Boom. Not a massive difference, but it just makes it look a bit more translucent and illuminated from the inside. I'm actually going to go and change the, uh, the fall off again and pull that back, limit it so it's a bit closer and tighter. And actually, I think I want to increase the power again. 
Mm, still needs, needs a few more tweaks. Let's, let's tweak some numbers, shall we? I'm all about tweaking the numbers. But now, I would say that this is pretty much done. I believe the time has come to uh, set up a camera in this scene. And I think I just want a really wide-angle lens on that camera, just to make the city look a bit bigger than it is. And to increase that effect, I want to move the, the camera really close to the ground. And just angle it slightly upwards. Let's let's just set up our project as well. And um, so we get that that 16 by 9 reference, so we're not working to the wrong aspect ratio. That'd be awkward. And while I'm here, I might as well set the right frame rate and tell it to render the full range. And I will just slightly tweak the position and angle of the camera. I think this is a pretty good start point. So at the beginning, first frame, this is more or less what I want the camera to be like. Just a rather wide opening shot showing the whole city like that. And you know what, see, like this, I think we can do with some highlights on the crystals. So I'll turn my light into an area light. I'll go into details and turn down the samples, because for a scene like this we don't really need many, but we do need it seen by reflection. And then angle the light towards the city, so we actually pick some reflections up. And then make the light bigger as well, so we can see the reflections. And probably increase the visibility multiplier. And then we get some, some stronger highlights. Good. I reckon this is going to look just fine with higher anti-aliasing, but I'll save that for final render. Alright, now let's get back to the camera. A good place to start with the camera animation is to set the start position. And I want it quite far away so you see the whole city. And then at the end frame, I want it much closer to the city. And I'll set a keyframe for that as well. So that kind of slowly animates towards the city as the particles shoot up. But somewhere around here, I want it to start tilting up and following the particles. So I will go to the, uh, the frame where we're at and set a keyframe for the tilt of the camera. And move to the end frame and just tilt it right up. And then I'd like to move in a bit closer so we get some more crystals in the foreground. Like so. Make your frame again. And what we could do as we tilt the camera up is we can move it down. And that way we put some more crystals in frame towards the end. And speaking of the end, I'll make sure that these keyframes, I'll select them and make sure that they don't ease out towards the end before it cuts. And I'll do the same for the beginning. However, for these middle keyframes, the tilt keyframes, I want to keep some easing. Just so it smoothly starts tilting up. And with all those little things out of the way, this is what we've got. And in my opinion, I think we're ready for render now. And uh, setting up for render, that's... I'll, I'll turn that into a separate video. And I shall name it part 4, for those of you that are interested in that. But for now, thank you for your time, and stay in motion.